Rock and Roll Geek Show 769. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, is the one and only Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Saturday, June 10th, 2017. I'm recording the show and it's 4.21 p.m. I have a very special episode for you today. I have been working on this interview for quite a long time now and haven't told anybody about it because I didn't want to, A, I didn't want to jinx it and B, I was so afraid that somebody was going to have put this interview out before me so because uh this interview is very special to me because this is my real rock and roll hero my, the person who's responsible for me picking up the bass guitar this is pete way of ufo wasted pete way the rock and roll legend he has a new book out called a fast ride out of here i read it Last weekend, I, I flew out to see my daughter in uh, the Tri-Cities area of Washington, and I held back. I started to read it when I first got it. I, read, I just went through a chapter, and it was really fast. And I said, nope, I'm going to put this thing down. I'm going to read it on the plane to see Martina. I read it in the time that I was gone, and boy, was it a good book. Man, I on the way, I finished it on the way back, and... The last chapter, I fucking cried my eyes out like a little baby. It was such a good book, man. Very touching, very honest, and full of great rock and roll stories from the great Pete Way. So that's what I have for you tonight. I have an interview that I did with Pete Way. I just got off the phone with him, as a matter of fact. I can't tell you how excited I was uh, to talk to him and how nervous I was as well. I had him on the show like 12 years ago. And I was nervous back then, too. This time I was a little bit more nervous because I did not know what to expect with Pete's health and all that. Uh, But he turned out to be a very, very nice guy, as he was the first time. And I can't tell you how much my love for this guy extends. (laughs) Words can't describe how much I love this man, okay? So I'm going to shut up. I'm going to play a song and then go right into the Pete Way interview, uh... There's a little cliffhanger in it. and uh, Stick with the interview throughout the entire thing, friends, because uh, at the very least, it is, I guess I should say it's compelling, but uh, eh, maybe I'm overselling it or underselling it. But before I do the interview, I'm going to play a song. This is live, UFO, live at the Marquee Club on November 16th, 1980 on the uh, No Place to Run tour. This is at the Marquee Club in London. This song is Letting Go. Let this roll, and then we will go right into the Pete Way interview. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and thank you for everybody to everybody for donating. Please keep the donations coming. They keep the show alive. I'm alive! Too far. 
way. I'm nervous as fuck. Hello. Hello. Hello, Pete. It's Michael Butler. Is that Michael? Yes. Sorry, I missed your call. Hello. Hello can oh, you? Oh, hear... Michael. I'm Pete. Hi, Pete. How are you doing? I am. I've been trying to get hold of you for about fifteen minutes or more, oh. but uh, I was a bit worried. Um, I don't know. You know, it's like transatlantic uh, lines and that. But I yeah. thought, well, I'm not calling Mongolia, <laughs> so I was hoping I would get you. Yeah. But, um, well, I anyway, have, I have you how now. are you? I am super great. Could not be better, especially now that I'm talking to you. I talked to you about uh, 12 years ago. I think you were living in Columbus. Uh, you, I, I talked to you and Finn. So it's nice to talk to you again. Yeah, yeah, probably so. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for calling back. It was just a little bit of a. Um, I was worried because uh, I don't like to let people down, and uh, especially as San Francisco is very close to my heart. Oh, so, um, you know. So. Um, well, I'm really. Anyway, Mark. I'm really honored to talk to you. There's probably no bigger fan of yours than me. Um, when you, I, first of all, I finished, I just finished your book. I was on the plane coming back from visiting my daughter and I, yeah. I finished the book on the plane in the last chapter. I just started crying uncontrollably and I was embarrassed on the plane because I don't was, make my head swell. Don't <laughs> make my head swell, Michael. You know, <laughs> but I appreciate that. It's Very much. really, really a good book. It took. I there is a few. Well, it's a true. It's a true book. You know, had my ups and downs, as my friends know, and things like that. And I've had the illnesses, you know, because of, uh, sadly, yeah, you know, I had the cancer and then the heart attack, right. and uh, and uh, I can't say that like, I'm completely a normal human being. But I try my best to be. How is I the, think I'm best described as eccentric. <laughs> well, most most uh, brilliant people are. So, how is your health now? Oh, it's much better, much yeah. better. But I tell you what, um, when I was a junkie, I used to have needles all over me all the time trying to uh, get it in and all that. Now, I have hospitals trying to put needles in me. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> um, uh, in the book, you talked about having... So, yeah, carry know, on, Michael. I'm sorry. In the book, you talked about having so many needles, you had to eventually shoot into your groin, and when you couldn't shoot into your groin anymore, that's when you had to stop doing... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had to have uh, veins removed when I got back to England. And that it was uh, it's not a clever experience. It was just didn't seem anything unusual to me because I just thought, well, I've got a problem and I'll deal with it. And like anybody that becomes a, a junkie, it's like I'll deal with it tomorrow. Yeah, that's the best way I, I can describe it. Well. You are the reason that I even that I ever I'm a bass player and you're the reason that I picked up a bass and you, and you are probably my true rock and roll hero. I'm sure. I think I'll, you told me that when I last spoke exactly. to you. To I'm, be honest, I am sure a lot of people. Tell I can you remember that. speaking to you. <laughs> yeah, the one kid that kissed your ass. I remember so speaking to you, so uh, I can remember pretty much a lot. I, a lot of people don't think I remember things, but I really do. You know, I, so uh, I'm never ever so happy that you uh, were interested um, in talking to me. And the book is interesting. It's it's true, you know, from from day one. I don't exaggerate. Yeah, of course, the book company likes to make it a little bit more. I don't know, like James Bond movie, but. Me, it's just I lived the life, and that was it. Yeah. Um, doing the album, and uh, and Pink says to me, "Well, you got to be on your best behaviour." Um, we're pretty much getting very close to finishing, mm-hmm. so um, it's going to be great. The actual album. I, well, I say it will be, but I've got 
Kenny Alton uh, playing drums and uh, Slash has been playing some guitar yeah. and things. And, of course, I've got my own people that do stuff. I've, I've not done too much bass and I've not do, done too much six-string. I, I wrote using those instruments, but... Uh, Suddenly, I'm a lead singer. Right. And, you know, when you have to, uh, uh, you know, when you've got to sit down, write lyrics, and then also sing them, uh, you don't have too much time for bass. I'd probably say to somebody who's working for me, this is the way I see the bass, if you see what I mean. So you're... And uh, so I do it. So you're only singing on I'm the album? Sorry, Michael. You're only singing on the album? You're not playing? Yeah, it's just me singing, yeah. Who's playing bass and guitar on the it's... album? Well, I play on some of it. Okay. But I don't, I couldn't concentrate. I mean, I can't be a one-man band. Right. If you see what I mean. And uh, drums of Kenny Olsen. I don't know if you're familiar with Kenny. Uh, Kenny... But he's one of the best drummers in the world. Uh, you're talking about Kenny Aronoff? Yeah. Kenny Aronoff, yeah. yeah he is, he's playing drums. He is one of the greatest drummers in the world. He has a book out, too. Yeah, he actually did me the honor of saying, I, I really like your songs and things like that. So we went from uh, one extreme to the other, you know, playing uh, rock and roll. And uh, so did, did my that's what I do. Did Mike Klink find the musicians for you, or did you reach out and find these guys? Well, Mike knew Kenny, and okay. of course Mike knew, knew Slash due to the guns. Thing. But I've known Slash for years anyway, yeah. you know, but I hadn't met Kenny before. Did you guys all sit in a room together and play, or did you, or did they like send you the tracks they recorded and then you sent you the tracks? And you yeah, just... both. Mike right. came over... Um, Kenny did it in his studio, actually. Slash came over a bit, and I went over once uh, and that. But I, ever since Donald Trump came in, I should be a bit careful because I've got a checkered past with my uh, uh, with my passport, you yeah, know? for getting into the I haven't States. done anything bad for a long time. Are you... But, um, Are you legally able, legally able to return to America? Because I remember before you couldn't do yeah, it with yeah. UFO. And <clears throat> yeah, no, it cost me a lot of money, actually. Really? And ironically enough, UFO didn't help me yeah. pay my bills. I mean, I paid for everything, talking thousands of pounds to get it sorted. So uh, a friend of mine actually gave me uh, the idea of getting the, the charges squashed because they were... Just minor charges, really. But, uh, you know, anything with drugs that uh, yeah. comes up. Not proud of it. Eh. just happened. Exactly. Well, know? what's good about the book is, you know, some of these books, they talk about, some of these other musicians in the books, they talk about dr doing drugs like it was a badge of honor and stuff. Yours is just more matter-of-fact, and it comes across way more real than... Uh, than most of these other rock books that seem to well, be Well, it is really, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm no, I, I don't certainly want to promote people taking drugs because, quite honestly, I was lucky in a way because when I started to get an addiction, I had the money to afford the addiction. Some people don't, and it destroys their lives, destroys their families. Things like that. Me, sadly, my wife died, you know, and uh, that was, well, pretty awful, you can imagine. Yeah. So, um, situations like that, they don't happen to just anybody. They happen to me, <laughs> I can tell you. Well... In the book, at the end of the book, uh, you hadn't, I, don't, I think this was finished before you had the heart problems. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, okay. In the book, you, at, um, at, the, at the end of the book... And also I had prostate cancer. Yeah, yeah, but you had the prostate cancer. That's in the book, but nothing about the heart problems in the book. Yeah, I was flying back from Germany because I was working with Tommy Newton um, on a, 
uh, vocal. In fact, we're trying to get now time to put the final vocals together uh, because everything is just about ready. Um, but obviously, um, I'm not Pavarotti, but <laughs> I do sound cross between Bob Dylan and God knows who else. Um, you know, that is, I, I, and Bob's cut. But that's one of the cool things about uh, the last album, Amphetamine, is one of my favorite albums of all time. I think I did a track by track review of that on the show. And your voice makes that album. Well, that's which is real. So great. That's, the words are. Uh, the words in that, they're all real. I, I lived it. It's like, I just thought, well, Tar- Tarantino can write it. So can <laughs> exactly, I. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, so I wrote, I wrote the whole thing, you know. just Because uh, in a way, UFO has become a little bit more sort of middle of the road right, or something. Right, I don't right. know. Um, and that, and anyway, because of my attitude, and I was a little bit on the, uh, um, put it like this, you wouldn't have employed me in your studio. So, uh, uh, basically, there was a falling out, and it was like, straighten up or fuck off, basically. Yes. So, I swear. Um, and in the end, it was just as easy for me to, uh, not do it because I knew I had a problem and um, the book isn't to say oh look how clever I am I had a problem the book is just really a, a story yeah you know and I don't knock any of my friends or anything like that talk about arguments and that it's just reality what I like about the book is uh, you know it's kind of like there's it's a cross between you talking, then it then it mixes some oral history in there. By oral history, I mean it gets other people's um, input about you know their side of things about what happened at the time. Like there's um, yeah, Joe Elliott's in the book talking about. Well, I, and, I, I wasn't trying to impress anybody. That's for sure. You know, but I think some of my friends kind of got a bit like he's going to die type of thing. And, uh, but I always managed to know exactly what I was doing, but I spent so much money, it was ridiculous. My wife died in the end, so it wasn't, you know, it's, if you want to write a, a film on it, it's like, you go, Christ, in a way, my book is a little bit exaggerated, I know that, because they try and emphasize certain parts in the book that I probably, when you're numb and uh, you're not necessarily 100% there, you, um, um, I just accepted it. I mean, cocaine I accepted because I saw it was just like nothing. It's like going and buying, a, you know, some candy or something, you know? Yeah. yeah. In, at the end of the book, you talked about, <clears throat> at the end of the book, you were st- you said that you still do coke occasionally and you still drink every day. Is that still the case? No, I've got to be very careful because I'm going through liver treatment and Mike Clink will not have me drinking. When I say that, drink every day, what I mean is it's more like I have some wine with a meal. Right. It's not like uh, waking up and knocking back a bottle of wine. So I probably could do. But uh, a friend of mine said to me, who's got a, actually a heroin problem, but I'm helping him out with. And he said to me, he said, you know, you've got to remember that you and I have an incredibly high tolerance. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. so... Yeah. Uh, it's not like if you have a drink, you're going to fall off the wagon and you and sink into uh, despair or something, anything like that. No, I don't. I don't go around the bar or anything and knock back the, um, you know, knock back booze or anything like that. I, I don't drink spirits actually. On a very rare occasion, I drink spirits. 
and that's sometimes just uh, and then sometimes I don't drink for a long quite a long time when I came out of rehab I didn't drink but I had one or two reasons that I guess I like a, I like the taste of it but yeah, exactly. it's not a big deal to me um, I <laughs> I like to be normal. And being normal. You know, and I, I really, really, I want to work and I want to play guitar and uh, I want to play bass. Uh, some of it on tour, I probably won't play a, play a lot of bass. I might play some six string, but I will play things like, um, you know, uh, crazy, like, kids around here, well, I want to practice for the beach. <laughs> yeah. God, the jungle's the only thing that you believe in. You know, I mean, it's like that. Uh, but I can play that, so I do a bit of both. Right. And then certain things do become the impossible. But nothing's impossible until you try practicing. You know what I mean? Have you thought about putting, so, uh, have, have you thought about putting a band together and going out and playing gigs with to support the new album? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that would actually like me to do it. And, uh, you have to excuse me for a second. Okay. I just this is really bizarre. Do you like soccer? Uh, yes, I do. But oh, I, I be, yes, I do. But being in the United States, you know, it's not that. Uh, it's not that available out here. It's pretty big when I lived in Columbus. So I was just, because England are playing Scotland in the World Cup oh. you saw, uh, oh, okay. qualifier, and I just, I was, uh, if you excuse me, I, I'm just putting, I'm not listening to it, I'm just, just putting the score up, that was all. And what's you the know, score? What's how, the, how you do sometimes. What is the score? England are winning 1-0 against Scotland. What's the score? So, uh, it's one one zero to England. Okay, so well zero one to England because it's in uh, in uh, in Glasgow. Okay, so uh, I do no. I just um, I apologise because this house is actually quite big, so I've got three or four televisions, and I wasn't sure exactly if I knew how to put the television on. <laughs> right. Yeah downstairs but i went to a quiet room in the house you know <laughs> so is is that your house did, but, did you buy the house you have enough money to to be able to buy a house still i'm not sure of money but i didn't but I, I rented it and you know why because i didn't intend to live here i probably would be happy to move to france and the reason is i got divorced and had to give my wife uh, you read in the book, I had to give her the house. So um, I was putting off that uh, situation. So um, what I want, I have to go to hospital probably about twice a week uh, for blood tests and that because they're doing everything on me, liver, kidneys. Um, huh. I'll be buying on it peak by the time yeah, exactly. I actually end up touring. So you're getting checked. Yeah, no, you're getting so, checked. Uh, you're getting checked for your liver now. Is there hepatitis or anything like that? Um, well, the hepatitis, um, they don't know if it's there or not because they can't really find it. But I did have it, and consequently, what they want to do is to uh, there's a new drug out that you take. Is it? completely wipes it out yeah that's uh, so um yeah. it's probably better yeah, pamela, you know, pamela anderson uh, did that drug yeah well apparently there's something to do with tommy but i don't know if, if it, all women say that it's like that bastard gave it to me right. but I, well it, supposedly she actually took... you know what i think it's i think it's a mixture of possibly even you know, using a note, rolled up note and snorting up coke, you know? Well, supposedly she took that drug and now she's cured of hepatitis because of that drug that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she did. She took two months off. Well, not off, but she did it. No alcohol, 
That's why I hardly drink at all. Um, I drink every now and again just for the fun. Well, not the fun, but, you know, sometimes with food and that, it's just well, what I want to do, Michael, is be normal. Yeah, well, food tastes better. With, I mean, beer tastes better with food. I know that because I like to drink some beer every now and then, every day. Exactly, yeah. Well, I'm vegetarian. I want to be vegan. Huh. But I am, you know, 100% best behavior. And that I'm not other... I mean, I do eat seafood, which is very hypocritical, if you see what I mean, yeah. because fish have lives of their own, you know. So uh, well, I don't know. There's so, some, you know, some animals are put on this earth to, to be eaten. Yeah, but, I, you know, yeah, I agree with you, but same time, I don't believe in it, if you see what I mean. Yeah. I'm so, I love animals, and uh, what money I do have, I do give some money to animal charities, things like that, um, you know. I live very frugally, even though I live in a very nice house in a very nice area. But it's, you know, I, I don't go out particularly in that unless, unless I can charge it to somebody. Right. <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm not like as bad as that, but you can imagine. Um, but I, I sit and watch football, do things like that, and I practice on the guitar. You know, I've got my six string here. I could play you. Uh, uh, I could play you. Um, think I'm going crazy if you like. I would love to. Um, Life. You know, kids around here want to practice with the preach. A lot of the jungles are on the thing that they believe in. You can't buy snack on food stamps tonight. Smith and Western feels so damn good in your hand. And then, there ain't no Alice here. There ain't no one around. So anyway, yeah, on, you on heard a, it, so on a, don't worry. On amphetamines, great. <laughs> you well, know, when you, you know, when I... <laughs> When I found out you had cancer, I did a I did a uh, episode on this show. I prayed to God really hard and really sincerely that you would pull through, and you pulled through. Then when you had the heart problems, I prayed hard again. I did another episode and I prayed hard, and you seem to have come through with that. I, I'm I'm telling you the truth here, and I'm not trying to kiss your ass, even though I am. Every yeah. sing, every single day, I say a prayer to God that, for your health. Oh, you're a good man. I'm there. just, look, I'm tough as, I'm tough as nails, as they say. So, it's all right, everything, it's really weird, because I go to the hospital, that's why I'm down here renting, because uh, Bournemouth, the Royal Hospital, has been so good to me, but they kind of, they get more of a kick about, my celebrity status when they actually do uh, I can get appointments immediately oh, nice. I can get to be seen same with teeth and things like that yeah in the book you talk about some you guy know. in the book you talk about one of the doctors uh, actually um, brought his guitar I think I think you said he brought his guitar and started playing along to UFO songs something like that yeah I've got one of my doctors um, he's actually he, he's really good I just got him to write he had a song and I said I quite like it but the trouble is my album's gone on for so long now uh, you know that it makes it very difficult just to uh, um, finish it off and Mike has to travel over to me because I'm trying to avoid Donald Trump so, um, so the only, you know, the only thing, the only thing that needs to be done left on the album is to finish vocal trucks. Yep. Oh, I wish so, you, I um, wish you, I, uh, uh, what is missing? What's left of the vocal tracks to do? Have you finished any of the songs completely? Cause I've heard. Well, songs I can't even tell you the names of because I can't remember the names <laughs> because, you know, his songs, what happens is 
you have a working title, right? And then you decide to, uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, if you like, uh, I'll sit uh, crazy, I'll, I'll just do this for you, okay. So they have the artists who can't remember his own <laughs> that's, words. That's stuff from Amphetamine. That's not any. That's not new songs. That's some stuff from Amphetamine. No, I can't play it really. To be honest with you, I've lost track of the uh, this one. I'm not saying I've lost it, but um, it's just I've changed the um, or Mike's changed the. Um, What's the word? Uh, the arrangements, stuff like that. Kenny's done different drum arrangements. So, um, have, have, I mean, yeah, have, other thing. Uh, have you heard the two songs? The, um, yes, I have. The, well, I've got Slash and somebody else. I heard that so one. So you get, oh, I can do this for you. I can do this for you. Right. Remember, I can't remember them. Right, okay. I can hear you. Yeah, I I heard that one. That's off that album. I heard that one. That's on the album teaser. And then I heard the the um, the one with Slash playing guitar. That sounds like it already has vocals yeah. down on it. See, I can't do I can't do Slash's guitar. Well, so um, so I'd have to play. Um, it's it's actually tongue in cheek. It's supposed to be a joke because the I had acquired an incredible drug. Problem, yeah, that's all. I suppose compared to most people, how ma how many songs? So, how many songs are the vocals completely done on, or complete or completed? Um, about eight or nine. So how many? There's so, so there's we're maybe, trying to go. There's maybe three we're going left. For Twelve. You going? Okay, so there's three songs left to do vocals. That's yeah. A, it just depends. Depends what we finish. You know, um, because I honestly don't know at the moment um, what's... Uh, it depends what Mike wants to do, so I can't honestly tell you. Um, do you. Do you think the album... Scotland are just equalized, by the way. Oh, great. Sorry, I'm sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> sorry. What quarter, oh, right. what quarter is it in? What period is it in? Oh, it's just, um, well, it's in the last 15 minutes, so okay. England can probably come up and rustle up a winner. Right. It just, there was an excellent free kick that the Scottish did, but this is, like, very unusual for England and Scotland, because, not unusual, it's like World War Three, you know, so... Uh, Right, you know, it's they're quite funny. Really, they are they're rivals. I'm assuming. Oh, Scotland and England, yeah, yeah. They still think there's probably uh, 
um, you know, we're trying to take over Scotland and all that. In fact, <laughs> we do own Scotland, but, uh, you know. Where's the, I, um, who is the home team? Where's the game at? Well, it's in Glasgow. Okay, so it, so Hamden Scotland Park. Scotland's the home team, so the, so England is in front of a, a hostile Yeah, crowd. so it's like one one now. Yeah, so one one. England will come back. Hopefully they'll get some backbone and come in. It's, it's one of those games that it's always, you know, like uh, I'm sure with uh, American football, I'm sure these sort of games the sort of thing that, um, uh, you know, it's so close because of your rivals yeah. and that in this home city. Well, England's such a small country, so you're going to get that, you know. Well, that's what makes but the game fun. Nonetheless, man. So there's only three songs oh, left to do. Uh, so the, uh, do you do you know when the album... Is the album going to come out? Or, no, I actually... Three or four on some BVs, backing vocals. Is the album got to be done? Is the album going to come out this year? Please say yes. Yeah, I hope well, so. We need the album out as soon as possible. Yeah, please finish That's it. That's the hardest thing. It's just, uh, well, it's not my fault, but um, obviously when I I had to have uh, radiotherapy stuff like that. And when I had the heart, I had to take stuff easy. So that's why I'm either going to France or I'm going to uh, finish it in London. Huh. And then it will be done. Because it'd be nice to have it out in September. You know? Yeah, it will be Particularly because a lot... Well, the book's been number one for a couple of weeks. Oh, really? Uh, in England. Huh. Yeah. So... You know, it's like, uh, well, everybody likes that sort of thing, don't they? It's a bit like, but actually, it's reality. Did you buy yours off Amazon, I, or did you get one sent? No, I bought it. I paid for it. I can't. I don't remember what the where I I got it. Uh, book Depository is where I bought mine. I actually paid for my book. Um, and I read it. Yeah, in, no, the only reason I asked you being a journalist, I would have. Eh. Uh, thought you'd have got a copy because you know what I didn't have a copy and uh, suddenly eventually I got 15 copies you know I didn't even so, know you uh, were, <laughs> I didn't even know you were writing a book and then next thing I know it says hey the Pete Way's new book is out fast ride out of here and I said what Pete Way's yeah, got a book and I immediately ordered it it took like two weeks to get here because yeah, it went straight to went straight to number one in the UK and wherever it was. I've got all sorts of people saying to me because, but it, it had been pre-sailing, uh, be pre-sales for a long time because it took a while because we wanted to get to get the um, the, um, the album out with it. But uh, but nonetheless, you know, it's uh, in a way it's not a bad thing. So I've got to get my keys over to France, um, and we're going to use a, a mobile studio, or we're going to um, do it in London. It's it's a little bit up in the air, but we'll get it done. And uh, um, some of my uh, health issues had come up as to whether or not I had to be in hospital and stuff like that. Hmm. I'm pretty pretty healthy you know it's just it's more checkups now than anything else so um did you get any feedback yeah. did you get any feedback from anybody about the book like maybe from phil or, or anybody like that no nah, i don't speak to him particularly i heard last i heard you, you know? guys, last i heard you guys lived kind of really close to each other do you still live near him no i was in brighton but no i'm not um, I live in um, Christchurch, which is just outside of Bournemouth. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things that uh, um, I well, I don't chase everybody up, and they're on tour more than 
I haven't been on to her for four years. Yeah. But I, I've got people that are going to go on to her with me. Oh, England have just gone to one up. So uh, we're winning. If you've got a bet on England, yes. Uh, <laughs> this is a good interview, isn't it? Go, well, I'm doing a review on, um, uh, on the foot, football soccer results. Hey. But I've, got a, I've just done a, a thing for Burn magazine, right? Uh -huh. And um, the, the um, they uh, burned did a a big feature, and the guy that I did the interview with said, "Well, he said uh, actually, he said he lives in France. He said, oh well, I I do interviews um, rather on sports.'" And I said, "Oh." And I've known him for a long time, this guy called Howard Johnson. So I ended up talking to him about sports more than I did. Because he kept saying, I've got 800 words to write. Could we go back to the, uh, <laughs> you know, right. write the, uh, the lines of coke and all that. <laughs> and you, you cook? Me, yeah. Do you, what do you, what do you, do you? I'm vegetarian, so I try and be vegan. Uh, so you um, do, you cook all vegetarian. Is your wife vegetarian too? Yeah. So what do you cook? What's the, what's the yeah. thing that, you, what's the thing that you cook the most? Oh, just vegetables and, uh -huh. um, actually, sadly, I, I eat prawns, things that are shrimp, you yeah. know, that sort of thing. But I, I want to get rid of that. I want to just, Eat, um, oh, um, I mean, uh, what's the word? Uh, you know, um, soya. Just soy? You know, yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, well, shrimp, prawns, prawns and fish taste so delicious, though. Well, you know, I try and do my best and try and live a reasonable life. It's difficult sometimes, but. I don't hang around with the people that I can get high on my own supply because I was spending so much money on it that it wasn't the best thing in the world to do. So, um, you know, what can you say? Yeah. Um, I, all I want to do is go on stage, be really, really good. Uh, Mike Clink will kick me up the studio and go home if I fuck up on this album, for these, all he needs is another three or four words. So, you know, it's, I mean, words, I mean songs. Um, so, uh, and the other thing, of course, you've always got to go through things to see how it works, you know, see if it's, uh, if there's anything that needs repairing. Plus backing vocals as well. Um, well, you know, Michael, it's uh, the two bits I heard in a long time. The two bits I heard from the new album sound fucking fantastic. So I hope you hear him get this thing done, man. I can't wait. Oh yeah, it's about going to be about. I want him to do it at least twelve, maybe fourteen, but maybe keep some for. Yeah, and I was like, I don't know, the B-side back in the day when you did the B-side. Do you at least have scratch uh, vocals? Yeah. You at least have, uh, like, scratch vocals on all of the songs? Well, I initially, when I wrote them, I did, because you always rewrite songs to make them the way you want them, you know. If you're writing a song and it hasn't been uh, uh, finished, you never stop working on it. Because you always think about possibilities and try and use my imagination and that, you know. Yeah, but, it's, uh, but on the actual tracks on the album, are there scratch vocals recorded on the on the songs that are, you know, on the album? No, they're no. Not. Actually, they're not, actually. Those two are not. Um, there's no backing vocals or anything on it. So, uh, of course... They're not finals, but they, we, we just put them up because people were getting fed up with waiting to hear something, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's not bad 
though, Michael. It's a lot more to go, you know. But I was going to say, do you want to continue this interview later, um, in about an hour? Uh, I would I would love to. I have to actually have to leave in an hour to meet somebody, but I would love to do it later on or maybe even... Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, I've just got to go and uh, pick up something... And um, it's not drugs. When I say that, I've just got a, a parcel. Um, uh, and uh, I wondered if uh, well, if you could call me again later or, or even tomorrow. I'm totally available. Are you awake in about? You know, are you awake in about three hours? Yeah, of course. So why don't I call you back in three hours? That sounds great, Michael. All right, Pete. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, that way. Yeah, you can finish that's watching. Right. The, you can finish watching the pressure. game and everything else. All right, Pete. I will talk to you yeah, soon. Yeah, pleasure's then. all mine. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Thank. Thanks, Michael. Okay. Okay. That's great. I'll Thank call you. you. I yeah, will... three hours. Sounds and good. I'll be there for okay. you. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Bye. I really appreciate that. No problem. I need promotion, and I'll tell you what. You'll be the first person to get one of the initial um, uh, albums and stuff. Well, I'll buy it regardless. We'll do it. it. I'll matter. make sure Jenny does it. Thanks. Okay, I will okay. talk. Okay, I'll talk. Keep around here while I practice with the preach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, okay, that sounds great to me. So we're talking ten thirty ish, yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, something like that. What's ten thirty? My time. Yes, I'll figure out what my time is. It's probably 2.30, something like that. I'll figure it out, yeah. Okay, Pete, I'll All talk right. to you soon. Well, I'll be there. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bless. Thanks, Michael. All right, bye. That's fantastic. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, there you go. That's either the end of part one or the end of the interview. We'll find out in three and a half hours. Oh, well, there you go. Take that however you want to take it, but... uh. That was quite interesting, and God, I fucking love that man so much, man. So we'll check back in three hours. I will either record the end of this inter of this episode, saying that I did not talk to Pete Way again, or I will do part two of the Pete Way interview. All right. So I'll see you in three hours, friends. <laughs> Pete, thank you for le taking my call again. I appreciate it. As I say, I'm uh, glad to talk and very pleased to be uh, um, talking to you again. <laughs> the pleasure is mine. I won't take up too much more of your time. There's a couple more things in the book I wanted to ask you, and then I have some listener questions, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, there, well, I wanted to ask you about the guy who influenced you on the bass. Uh, in the book, you talk about this guy named John Wood. Can you tell me about... Yeah, know? actually. Well, it, it was a band called Tomorrow uh, with Steve Howes in it. And that was yes. kind of very unusual. Yeah. 
and uh, they were very unusual in a way. But, but it was like rock. But the bass player sort of kept it going, but sort of did things that I hadn't seen anybody else do. So, to a certain extent, uh, I found myself watching somebody that really and truly, back in those days, you, you didn't really look at bass players. And, that, and I thought, oh, that's, that's really interesting. And he would sort of do things with the guitar, like sort of use it like a machine gun or something. Huh. And, uh, you know, just just things that were off the wall. A lot of times bass players, uh, you know, like the front man and stuff, wants the bass player to, like, stand back and not really be, not really overshadow him. Yeah. Like, did you ever have any problems with the other band members, like wanting you not to move around so much? No, not at all, actually. They liked it. It was, in actual fact, it was just, I could do what I liked. Um, and the reason I say that is because I think Phil was more subdued yeah. and he would, he would actually be happy to sing the song and then sort of move back to the mic, uh, sorry, to the drum riser, and uh, say, for instance, myself and Michael would, would get together in the centre of the stage and play out the solos. I, it was, uh, it was re really an original thing other than this guy, John Wood, which I haven't been able to find any footage of that guy to see what, uh, how he could have influenced you. But, uh, other than that guy, you were the only one who was really jumping around now. Now, of course, um, uh, Steve Harris, uh, is pretty much all over. The oh, place. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Steve used to watch, um, watch me play, you know, in, uh, the marquee club in yeah. the early days and then of course they did shows with UFO um, in still their early days and also on their American tour that we were actually headlining and I don't know Steve and I became friends um, because Ross Howth in uh, the photographer brought him up to a show in Birmingham. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, we just hit it off, you know. You know that those... He was telling me things... Sorry. You know that those guys, um, their intro tape has always been, uh, or at least for a long time, has been Dr. Doctor. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing, actually. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I, uh... I use it. I mean, uh, wouldn't be the first thing I'd think of doing, but uh, they now do it, and it's like an anthem for them. When you when you took when you uh, played with Ozzy for a short period of time with Tommy Aldridge on the drums, did Ozzy yeah. did Ozzy and the rest of the guys mind you jumping around so much on stage? Um. Ozzy didn't mind, um, you know, um, Ozzy and I were very good friends, so it was a bit like I could do what I liked, but I knew not to overstep what I was doing because it was the Ozzy Osbourne show, yeah. after all, but at uh, the same time, I, I didn't sort of stick like glue, you know, to the stage. What did Tommy Aldridge think of your playing? Um, he didn't like it. Really? Why not? <laughs> I don't know. It didn't do a great deal. Um, I did, we didn't really rehearse, to be truthful. So um, it, it was one of those things that, um, you know... If somebody wants to be critical, Ozzy was happy with it. Um, but you get a thing. So you've got to remember that I was traveling with Ozzy. And so, obviously, 
they were traveling as a band. Right. You were on, um, the, you were on Ozzy's bus. Me. You were on Ozzy's bus, and the rest of the band had their own bus. Actually, no. I used to travel in a, in a Range Rover with, oh, uh, oh, really? oh. with Ozzy oh, okay. and Sharon. So um, that was, um, you know, it was one of those things. We basically lived... Um, together well not i say that we went to the hotel together and went to the show together and and that i think with ozzy some people were just associates if that's the best way i can put it um and you were his friend and yeah exactly yeah that was that was the difference you know you get people that you know, basically paid to play. I was actually paid to just hang out, I think, <laughs> really, more than, uh, you know. What, um, did, what did Sharon think about you hanging out with Ozzy so much? I would imagine you would be a bad influence. Sharon encouraged it, oh, really? to be honest, because um, she trusted me with him, um, in a way, because she knew I knew the limitations uh, whereas Ozzy, to a certain extent, did not, didn't, uh, didn't have limitations. Although he seems to think that I, I was the one that uh, um, <laughs> had no boundaries. Right. Um, whereas Ozzy was very much um, controlled by Sharon, except. Ozzy would fight anything uh, that she would tell him to do. And he, she, like, for instance, we'd go for a drink and she'd say, well, just have one and come back. And she'd say to me, well, just have one and then make sure he comes back, won't you? Uh, and uh, of course, I'd say to him, um, we'd better go now then. We and he'd go, He's a Pope Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd go, and then we'd go and have another drink. Right. Hold on a second, please, Michael. Okay. I'm just going to... So I'm just doing my robe up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, I saw the score of the uh, soccer game. So is that good when they only tie? Two, or, two. Is that, is that good when it's only a tie, or is that not so good? Well, it was in Scotland, and it's the sort of game that, you know, you get local rivalries. Well, I guess England and Scotland's always like that. But they've got to come and play in England, which is a different thing. England did dominate the game, but in a way, you know, it's like the goals didn't go in and uh, Scotland had a couple of uh, free kicks and um, and scored from those, so it was, it's difficult to say with football, it's um, you know, a game can change with one goal but England equalised in the last three minutes, so um it's always interesting, but uh, sometimes it's uh, a little bit, um, a bit of a strain on the heart. Yeah, well, I would imagine that um, Scotland having the home field advantage would uh, would would have been picked to win. Yeah, and you've got ninety thousand Scotsmen. So, in there. so it's kind of good that England tied it up. Oh yeah, I mean it wasn't bad. It would have been nice if England had won because they they were actually playing better football. But Scotland played uh, to defend and uh, and then break through and get a free kick or something like that. And you know, uh, sadly for England, the free kicks went in. So, uh, but England came back. It's you know sometimes teams get too comfortable and uh, they hadn't played for a while England because the Premier League's only just uh, stopped okay. so now they're doing that but England England is still top of their the league for the uh, World Cup World Cup uh, 
uh, qualifying. So uh, it w- wasn't a disaster. It wasn't. It wasn't a great victory, but it it got the job done. Really, I, I don't know much about. Um... Uh, soccer, but I feel the same passion that you do with baseball in America. Yeah, yeah. well, that, you know, you can put all sports, I think, on a par sometimes with, um, you know, you never know what's going to happen next. And then, uh, <laughs> um, how can I put it? Um, they call it a game of two halves. And sometimes, you know, you get one team that will dominate the first half yeah, yeah. and the team that will dominate the second right, half, right. you know. So it can go either way, you know. It's just, uh, I would say Scotland had some breaks, but uh, at the same time, well, then obviously they deserved them because they had their defence working well and, and that so you know well in a way you know you have to follow it a bit more to learn it's not like say American football and stuff like that it's a whole different style you know and that baseball for me is a little bit weird because it's for me it's like cricket uh, we have in England and I don't really like cricket to be truthful, so um, well a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people think baseball is slow and boring, uh, but also a lot of people think that soccer is slow and boring. But if you really watch baseball, it's not slow and boring, and I imagine it's the same way with soccer. Well, same with soccer actually, because it leaves you on the knife edge. To right. be truthful, yeah, same, that's the way you I feel know, about baseball. Um, yeah, I mean, I wish I could honestly tell you that I could enjoy baseball, but I lived in the States for quite a while, and um, I could never really follow it, because it reminded me of cricket, uh, which they play in England, and around the world, actually, as being a bit slow, and more of a sort of, I don't know, like a a Sunday sport or something like <laughs> yeah, well, that, you know. Yeah, I love I love baseball. Though. Well, unfortunately, yeah, I mean, it, back to I, rock and I roll. I really wish I could honestly say that I understood it, other than just watching it and the running about and that. But yeah, I grew up with soccer. Yeah, I same um, way. With, I grew up with baseball. Same thing. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, you're. You, it's like somebody explained to me about American football, and when I said, "Well, I really don't see it," and they said, "Oh, you got to think of it as a game of chess, where you got the big guys in the middle that stop the the ones that the, who are attacking, and right. you know, it's 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 very clever, a lot more clever than I thought of sort of people that are just." knock each other over because it's in England they have a game called rugby and um, that I can never follow but that is actually they don't wear any outfits or anything but they just run at each other and god you know what I mean you you think uh, (laughs) you know I wouldn't want to be doing it you know what I mean not not unless you were a broken nose yeah, or exactly, broken dislocated exactly. shoulder, yeah. that sort of thing. Sort of uh, something a bit dangerous, Michael. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. You ever you still play soccer at all? Um, I don't actually. Not since the illness and yeah. that. Occasionally, you know, I, I mean, I, I can kick a ball, right. but I don't get the chance really. Um, because I, I have to be careful because of my heart. Actually, although that has obviously improved uh, considerably, and um, so I, no, in truth, but I follow it and I go to watch the team called Aston Villa that I support uh, quite a lot because I've had time on my hands. Obviously, would not. Um, 
we'd not finish in the album yet, you know, because had we've had to have breaks because I had the uh, uh, radiotherapy with the uh, cancer right. and things like that. And uh, but I'm okay now, you know. Um, the heart thing, I had to have my heart put back in the right on the right time because it was running a bit uh, disjointed and uh, that's it really you know but uh, other than that my love is music but it gets a bit boring waiting to finish off your album but at uh, same time that's why you do books but I got asked to do the book it wasn't something that uh, uh, <laughs> I I thought about who, it. Who and, asked you to uh, Who asked you to do the book? Um, actually, the book company and a guy called Paul Reese and uh, Jenny, my uh, manager and wife. So Paul Reese is uh, is the guy you did the book. Reese. Did Paul Reese? Did you did you just I uh, tell him the stories and he wrote them down? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, and then he turned it into a proper story. I mean, it was I basically did it like an interview, and he would pull out the questions, and we spent, I don't know, several weeks actually doing it, you know. And, and I wasn't trying to, um, how can I put it, uh, sensationalise yeah. it, actually. If anything, I was actually trying to minimize the um, some of the stuff that went on. Well, there's a lot because of because I just there's a lot of stuff about the about the you know the alcohol and drugs and stuff. But there's a but if you're a, yeah, but there's even more great rock and roll stories in the book. I mean, if you're a fan of music in general, there's great music stories and and especially if you well, that was that was my main concern because I. I mean, I, I'm not a big fan of talking about uh, drugs and stuff. I mean, it's probably well known that I've had my uh, fair share of them, but uh, and uh, sadly that different people have died associated with me in it, but it's yeah. not something that I, I would say I'm proud of. Speaking, you know, so speaking of that, a lot of people always wondered about the because um, there were all these rumors about which you clear this up in the book. There's all these rumors about Bon Scott. Uh, yeah, you talk about that in the book. Uh, he actually did not die the night he was with you, correct? Actually, that is actually wrong. Exactly. Um, yeah, he did. He wasn't actually with me. You see. Bon came down to the show, um, and Bon, being a long-time friend, because us and ACDC played together, obviously, yeah. you, you know, you get yeah. a friend comes in, and you say, come in the dressing room and have a drink and that, and you chat. Um, this was before and after the show. This was around the time of No Place to Run, right? Yeah, 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 we were playing, I think, four nights at the uh, Hammersmith Apollo. Right. I think it's called the Apollo now. It was, used to be the, Odeon. the Hammersmith Odeon, right. and, uh, which was very convenient because we all lived in London, as did I, Bond. But uh, there was a situation where there was people that were with Bond, uh, one or two Australian people and that and associates that came down that I didn't really get to speak to. I just had a drink with Bon in the dressing room, you know. Um, yeah, there was drugs there, of course. Um, but I, I honestly can't remember, and I mean I can't remember, um, Bon doing drugs any drugs then? you know okay. particularly you know i mean to be honest with you yeah i mean i think bond did some coke people that came down with him i think brought some heroin down yeah. um but um 
Yeah, I used it, and I probably bought some. But um, certainly I didn't uh, sit with Bond and give him heroin, you know what I mean? And uh, the last time I saw Bond, um, it's probably about midnight, because I lived quite close to the actual venue. And uh, so I went back, because my wife and two to have a child... Um, Charlotte, it was, um, you know, they were at home and expecting me to be back. Uh And so I did, you know. And uh, Bond went off with the people that brought him down. So I I really don't know what went on from after midnight. That's the thing. Certainly didn't go off anywhere because I... I wasn't allowed to go off anywhere because I was supposed supposed to be home. So he didn't. You di- know, he so didn't, he didn't die that exact same night. He died like twelve days later, didn't he? Um, actually, um, he it says in the book twelve days later, but actually, I uh, he died that night. Oh, really? He did. Okay. Huh. Yeah. So you yeah, didn't, you I mean, didn't you didn't give him you were just you just saw him backstage and just had a drink with him and said hey Bon it's nice to see you thanks yeah, for coming to the yeah. show yeah well I don't you know sort of put it like this you don't sort of say to somebody hey I have a line of this I have yeah, a line of that yeah yeah if I if I know that somebody does something then of course you know you, you might offer him a line of coke uh, I'm sure you've probably been to places where People will go, oh, do you mind, sort of thing, but uh, certainly not. Uh, no, it wasn't like that. I think if you see the picture in the book, you see he's bright eyed and yeah, bushy tail. Like, he looked like he was actually pretty, and he looked like he was kind of sober, actually. Yeah, exactly. So, whatever happened when they went, you see, because I would have got a I would have been driven back to my house, uh, which wasn't that far. So I wouldn't have, um, I don't know. I mean, I I don't push drugs on people, if you see what I mean. I'm too tight for that. If if I've got drugs, I keep them to myself. But I don't do do drugs anymore anyway. So it's uh, one of those things. In that picture, the look you have a look when you're looking at Bon Scott. You look like you're looking at him like you really, really like. You look like you you love the guy. There's a real oh, very good friends, and I admired him. You know, it's like with Angus and Malcolm. I particularly like those guys. Yeah. You know, they were like in a way they're my heroes. But when Bon comes down to see you, I just think, great, you know. Weren't you, see you s- weren't you the one who had to tell Angus that it, that Bond died? Um, actually, I got asked to um, say that uh, I got told, and I was asked for a phone number. Um, I had both Angus and Malcolm's numbers, um, and um, and I gave. Actually, Paul Chapman from the band, who was with some people that were with Bon, um, I gave him the uh, uh, Malcolm's number. I didn't give him Angus's number. Okay. Uh, I called Angus the following day when the news broke out, and Angus said to me, "Yes, he says I can't handle it. You know, he said uh, I've still got some of his stuff." In my flat, he said, you know, I can't even look at it. Right. So, what do you think about uh, Axel singing with ACDC? I think Axel's a great singer. But because I work with Mike Klink, I can't say anything else. But <laughs> right. I, I, I like Guns yeah. N' Roses. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I like anybody with energy. Well, and yeah, in my opinion, he just doesn't fit with ACDC. You know who would be good with ACDC? I'm sorry to get off ACDC. Uh, the guy from Rose Tattoo would be good in ACDC. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I, I, um, oh, God, I forget his name now. Angry, Angry Anderson. Guy. Angry Anderson. Angry Anderson, yeah. Yeah. But, I, you know, Angus said to me at the time when Bomb went, he said, I just felt like giving up. Uh, yeah. And it was probably record company and that that sort of said, look, come to your senses. Right. You know, um, sadly, they'd, you know, Highway of Hell had come out and, and it fitted the picture, if you see what I mean. Right, yeah. One other thing in the book that I had always wanted to know, too, that was always a little bit unclear of me, too, and it gets kind of gets cleared up in the book. When you uh, joined, when you started Fastway with, uh, with, with Eddie Clark... Yeah, did because people come up and say, "Oh, he didn't he play on the didn't he play on the Fastway album?" But uh, you didn't play on that album, right? I, I co-wrote it. You did. You co- I co-wrote it. You get credit on? Some... Are you credited on that album? I am actually now. now I think you are. at the time, uh, yeah. Because um... I have the vinyl, and I don't remember seeing your name anywhere on that album. Well, the thing was. I uh, had a court injunction put on me, and from, from even Chris... though even though Eddie said, "Oh, you know, we could have got him out of the court injunction." So the court well, injunction, you know, the court injunction was from Chrysalis Records. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. That's how come I ended up. Um, they gave me equal the same amount of money to put wasted together. Hmm, yeah. But. Ozzy called me and he said, look, I know you're in a spot. Um, why don't you do yourself a favor and come and work with me um, for a while? Before you started, before, and that's, you, before you did and wasted. That, so I, so yeah. I, yeah, okay. So it was kind of arranged because I was going to do that and then um, Chrysalis were ready to finance the new album. So I had, I was getting the band together and um, we, that's why we got the, uh, the Motley Crew Ozzy tour because I played with Ozzy and Sharon and Ozzy were kind enough to uh, but wasted, put, on, the wasted on, on the tour. So it, yeah, otherwise that would have, so it was easier. It would have cost a lot of money. It was easier for you to just uh, bow out of the fastway thing rather than be in court, and you just wanted to play rock and roll. And rather than be in court, well, you could. This was a way for you. To, you could continue to play rock and roll, and it's easier for you just to not do the fastway thing. Well, everybody was kept in the dark yeah. you see, except yeah. me, because sadly I didn't want to say, "Look, I don't know what to do," because. No m- member of the management called me up and said, oh, we'll pay your court costs. Now, the court costs alone would have been a fortune. Chrysalis offered exactly the same money as CBS for Fastway. And uh, I just felt at the time I didn't know what to do. It's, it was just disorientating. For me, you know, so uh, I, I I would have been glad to continue with Fastway. I was enjoying it. I mean, we Eddie and I started it from scratch, you know. So I didn't want to let everybody down. Same time, uh, the record do included my name um, on it, and. Uh, I didn't want them to lose the record deal because with Chrysalis, I was a key member in the in the contract, right. and so therefore they had every right to stop me working. It's a bit like a, a sportsman who's in a team. You've got a contract, and you can stop them from working. You know. Yeah, it kind of takes the fun out of rock and roll a little bit. Well, <laughs> well, it's when you get you have to sign something at the front door, and it basically says six months of work from scratch has gone nowhere. So 
I had to. That's one of the reasons I didn't ask for credits on the album because I wanted them to get their the money back that oh. had gone into it, you know, as well, because it was a very difficult thing for me to do. I can't personally afford to stand up and fight for it. You know, say, no, no, I'm not going to do it. Because I didn't have a chance. And that's why when Ozzy called me and said, look, why don't you come and play with me? And it would just take the heat off, you know. Yeah. Do you get tired of uh, you get tired of talking about this stuff? Not really. Oh, good. Sometimes it's good to get it off your chest. Yeah, you're good. Well, that clears it up. Did, was it hard to play the Aussie tunes? Because they're a little bit, uh, the style was a little bit different yeah. than UFO. It was hard? Yeah, you had exactly. to learn. You had to I, learn them almost we immediately. Had, well, to be honest with you, yeah. I mean, we didn't even have a rehearsal. We did just did a, a sound check. So I had to get it right. And the, sadly, the, uh, you know, it was, that was it first day I mean it's, it wasn't the ideal rehearsal situation where you get a week or something to get it together particularly on I was in at the deep end yeah. and really and truly I would have had to well I find it very difficult to change my style is the best way of putting it. I think I, um, I think I saw a picture of you using a pick with Ozzy, and you'd always played with your fingers. Did you play with a pick when you were with Ozzy? I, I always, actually with UFO, I played with a pick and fingers. Oh, you did? Okay. Because, I'll tell you why, because if you do a song like Out in the Street and that, which you do it, and I try and make it like a sort of Lou Reed walk on the wild side, and you make the bass just, sort of flow more gallop but inside. if you're doing if you're doing something like let it roll you need to get that click and a tongue up uh pick i don't know if you're familiar with those uh done up pick bends nicely it just catches yeah, yeah. captures that the mood but yeah. if you try and do it with your fingers Sometimes it can sound a bit clumsy. Right, yeah. I, now, I Steve that. Harris, for instance, plays with his fingers. Can play he, with his fingers. And he does and the gallop he stuff. Can, and he does all that. Yeah. And but it's just what you get into. I mean, I, I preferred to use the pick. And one of the reasons I used the pick was because when I was working with Ron Nevison, and I think with, even with Leo Lyons, um, bass players were using picks in the studio uh, because sometimes the accuracy with more, the fingers wasn't the same and you get more definition. Yeah, you get more clarity with a pick in the studio. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But if you're doing something softer and you're just sliding the notes and that, um, so... I used to, used to utilize the two, you know. Right. Well, so Call me clever, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but speaking of Ron Nevison, I, I, I hate to keep it on UFO. I'm sorry. Oh, which, by the way, I saw I saw you guys on, I think this was right after Randy died at the, in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I think it was on the Mechanics Tour. Oh, right. I think yeah, it, uh, yeah. It was still Ozzy. Was that uh, Tangerine Ball? That was a Tangerine Ball. It was like the World Series of Rock or something like that. So I forget That's what they called it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, well. That was pretty hard because you know I got friendly with uh, Randy. I've known him since rehearsal days before even the first Ozzy album was out. So uh, you know it was very saddening. Yeah. Uh, if anything, I was playing the bass for him just to do it but it almost felt like it wasn't right because we were touring together and obviously didn't play so it wasn't like uh, the Aussie Osborne UFO show because there was 
several other bands there, you yeah. know. So, yeah, I think, you know, I believe it was Pat Travers on the bill, I think, uh, maybe Foreigner. I don't really remember that well, but I'll remember. Probably. I remember yeah. UFO because I was there to see UFO. It was a mechanic store, which those three albums are my favorite UFO albums. Uh, no Place to Run. Oh, thank you. Wild, Willing, and Innocent Mechanics. Yeah. Way oh, thank you, Michael. All three of those albums are extremely underrated. Speaking of Chapman, his son, yeah. you went down to, this is in the book, you went down, you you were reconnecting with your daughter, and you promised to take her to Disney World, and uh, yeah, Mike Chapman's, or Paul, excuse me, not Mike, Paul Chapman's uh, son ended up taking her to Disney Disney World? Well, no, we went to Disney World, but myself and Joanna were using, so we actually pretty much didn't want to be going around Disney World. Yeah. So we thought we'll take two youngsters with us and Tice could drive. So, you know, they, they got on well. So uh, it was like we were, as a matter of fact, run, running out of heroin. So um, we really didn't feel well enough to go around Disneyland. In fact, we were more likely to need to go to Disney Hospital. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever, you uh, still, are you, do you ever have contact with Paul Chapman anymore? Um, I haven't because I haven't got his number. We had a bit of a falling out because, um, sadly, when the Wasted album came out that he was working on right. um, he didn't do any solos and um, Finn the singer um, decided uh, in no uncertain terms that um, he'd been to Florida with Paul to work on it and he said oh he's not going to do it we got to get somebody else in. And so me, I'm like, well, I don't know. I, was, I didn't know the situation that went on in Florida. And I, it was just very disappointing for me because I, I like working with Paul. And I was so disappointed that, uh, that uh, it, you know, I mean, I was pretty much given an ultimatum even in my own band mm. saying Pete you know he's fucked up you know he's got and I heard some of the stuff that was done down in Florida and it, it was it was quite appalling huh. there was no lead guitar solos right. um, and Finn was singing terrible um, the whole thing just sounded like uh, a bad night, a karaoke, huh. karaoke session. I like that and, one. But, I, I like that one self-titled Wasted album, though. I like that a lot. Oh, the first one. Uh, no, not the not Vices. Uh, this one is just. I believe this one's just called Wasted. Is it just called Wasted? Oh, you mean Back from the Dead? No, no. Maybe it's good, the bad, and the wasted. I don't know. The one with just the girl's breasts on the cover, and it says wasted on the front of, on, on over the girl's uh, breasts. Yeah, that was actually with... Um, now, I forget. I think Paul played lead guitar on that. Um, it was just a rock and roll record. It's a you great know? album. It's a um, great album. Oh, I'll tell you what. You're my, you're my hero. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Well, it was, um, you know, it, it went down well. I think he actually even charted in, in England reasonably highly yeah. and things like that. Uh, but um, Rolling Out the Dice, is course, that on? Rolling Out the Dice is on Good, the Bad, and the Wasted. What, what's on that? Yeah. Heaven Tonight might be yeah. on that, on that album. That's an EP, I think. Heaven Tonight, that's... That is a really good song, yeah. actually. I was just watching the the redid version with that uh, when you had they put together a, like a glam or a hair metal band and, and you guys that what is that save your prayers put a smile yeah, yeah. they put a yeah. smile on my face so watching you because you looked so fucking cool in that video. The rest of the band eh they look kind of poser, but you looked super cool. I'm the world's I'm the world's first critic of May, 
So um, one thing I do have to do uh, before, uh, obviously, uh, vocals are going to be absolutely, well, you can't finish it without me singing because I've written the songs and that, so they're ready to go. Um, but um, I've been playing six string more than I have bass, but I know that I can quickly pick up yeah. the bass and, you know, it's, it comes as second nature. Yeah, it's, it's like swimming or riding a bike. Especially, you know? if, especially if you're playing guitar. I mean, guitar, you know, you're still, you're still keeping your fingers going oh, yeah. somewhat. So. Oh, absolutely. Well, I think you, you caught a little bit of my attitude guitar earlier this afternoon, didn't you? Yeah, well, it's about, well, it's about the attitude. This atti- afternoon, my time. <laughs> it's about the attitude more than the... Uh, in tuneness, yeah. I get. I'm, I'm sure well, that Mike Clink might diff, might uh, beg to differ with that when he's engineering. But yeah, I was just I just picked it up. Didn't even check through it was tuning. It's just one of my guitars, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's not that difficult for me to write songs. Anything. All I want to do is just finish the album. Go on to got the book now. So everybody knows that I'm a bad man. And, uh, <laughs> no, because everybody in the book, everybody in the book, there's a lot of there's there's other people talking about you in the book and giving their side of the story. And everybody, to a person, everybody in that book has nothing but high praise for you. None of them said that you were a bad man, including Michael Schenker. Oh, me and Michael get yeah, on great. You well, know, I, it's, 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 me and Michael get on great. It's um, you know. It's a myth that Michael's difficult to get on with. Yes, if Michael doesn't like something and that, yes, he'll tell you what he thinks, but I've never had a problem with Michael at all. I I normally just get a smile from Michael, and if I make a mistake, he'll tell me, uh, he'll look at me and go, don't make that mistake again. (laughs) He's kind of a... Kind of a mad genius in a way. He's a genius, and he's he's very very uh, thorough with yeah, it, yeah. everything he does. Yeah. You know, I'd say in some ways he over practices because he gets so much into his playing that he could almost do with taking some time off and just relaxing and put a bit of Keith Richard into his playing or something like that. But that's where me and Michael differ on, right. well, on that type of thing. There's, it's, but, there's, no, I it's, mean, it's two types of rock and roll, and yours is the more... Uh, yours is the more real rock and roller side, and his is the uh, yeah, studied guy side. But Michael can play rock and roll, I can tell you. You know, it's like it's in his blood, and uh, so um, you know, love him to death. Yeah. You know, I don't want to take up your entire evening, Pete, and I thank you so much for doing this. But I have three more questions, if you don't mind. Sure. All right, the first one: uh, the album uh, "Strangers in the Night." Ron Nevison. I just heard an interview Ron, with Ron Nevison. He said two of those songs on that album were actually not live. You went in the studio and just did uh, and recorded. Yes, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, you, I'm, I'm forget. You know what? I'm was, sorry, but I forget which two they were. He wouldn't. He refused to it, answer the question. I have a guess on which two. Uh, I'm guessing. I, I think it was this kid's. Oh, really? And, um, That's not what I guess. And. Uh, Da, da. That's this. That's this kids. Yeah. Oh yeah, and um, I forget why because I think it, we to make it a double album. Right. That's what he said. With and the we, but I, to... I have to tell you this: we, when we say it wasn't done live, we did it live in the studio. But what right. it, Ron yeah. probably meant was there was no audience there. Right. My... So we just played it. Sorry. My guess, which is I obviously totally wrong, my guess was only you can rock me and shoot, shoot. I don't know why, but I guess because it sounded the, the it sounded like it was No, like, only 
Oh, you, you can rock me and shoot, shoot for those. Okay. Uh, done live. So this kids and... Totally live. This kids and maybe uh, Mother Mary? Mother uh, Mary, I, I think, possibly. Okay. okay, there you go. All yeah. Right. That's the only... But you've got to remember, it's a long <laughs> bit of a while ago. Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. Two more questions. How... how how were you? Do you want people to remember Pete Way? Um, good question. Not, um, not, not really, but I haven't finished it. I haven't finished the Pete Way story yet. Okay. The Pete Way is going to come out with the new album and a tour, and I'll either fall flat on my face because I'll be doing a lot of singing, or I'll uh, come out like, wow, couldn't well, believe he well, could do it. I've heard the two I've heard two bits from the new album, and both of those sound better than Amphetamine. And I, I already told you, Amphetamine is one of my favorite albums of all time, so you're not going to fall flat yeah, on your face. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's another thing, you know. The, the two guys that work with me, on that post overdose, so I give you a rough idea. Of, oh, yeah. uh, that doesn't even go in the book. It was pretty sad, yeah. you know. And that's, you know. Do you have a? It's not something I'm. You have somebody putting out the new album. Yeah, um, we're talking to people all the time, but you can't play people fresh air. Because uh, Mike, for various reasons, has had difficulties with my illnesses and that. But I'm pretty much fit now, you know. I would imagine. Um, I would imagine that there would be a lot of people who would want to put that album out. But there is always the crowdfunding thing too. You can get the fans to purchase it in advance, which a lot of bands have yeah, done well I mean, with. Yeah, I tell you what, it's. That is a drop in the ocean. Those two songs, to to it's it's very gritty because my influences go from Bob Dylan to ACDC, the Stones, well, people I work with, you know, yeah. and that. So uh, I don't mince my words. I keep my words pretty straightforward. Sometimes I think, mm, yeah, the songs are to. That, Songs or lyrics are to the point, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, narcotics is actually supposed to be funny. Right. If that's the best way of saying it. Because all my friends are getting uh, on narcotics and that, you know. Yeah. It was Slash said to me, he said, you know what, Pete? Because that's when he was playing on that one. Yeah. He said, uh, you know what, Pete? And I love the bit where you say, Peruvian cocaine. <laughs> See, it's tongue in cheek. Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. It's not. It's not supposed to be serious. Exactly. You, know, yeah. you have any? You have any fear of dying at this point in your life? I mean, are you afraid of dying? Uh, not at all. No. Okay. Um, uh, the reason is that. I could happen any time and that, but I'm not using, but I could still, having been through the illnesses and the cancer, stuff like that, I mean, I don't fear it. And quite honestly, going back some time, I would think, Christ, I'm going to have a heart attack from sheer use of large amounts of cocaine. And, And then also... If you've got a needle that's packed full of smack and you do it, you've got to know what you're doing. That's why people die, if you don't know what you're doing. So I just used to uh, be careful. And that, and that I shouldn't even be saying it because it's not clever. I don't... I, I, I much prefer the love of my life, which is music. That, you know, that's the I mean, thing. Mu- rock and roll brings you the most joy of anything, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why it's very frustrating. I had the illness, stuff like that, 
and um, I'm ready to go, really, you know. To, to, it still takes a while after you've had radiotherapy and things like that that your body can be a little bit messed up, you know. Yeah. Well, please, Pete Wave, thank you so much for doing this. Please, please, please finish this album as soon as you can. Get in there and, and do the vocals. It's on its way, actually, because Mike's going to come over at the end of the month and uh, we're going to get these vocals done. Yeah, just lay if him not, down. He's going to cut my balls off. So yeah. <laughs> Just lay down the vocals and get this thing done already. I am, I am tired of waiting for it. I want it very soon. I tell you what, you should try being me. You can imagine that. And I yeah. spent an awful lot of my own money on that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm having to eat chips or something. No, I can't say chips because in case it's... Uh, uh, I'm a vegetarian and partially vegan. So uh, a bit weird, really, for an ex-junkie. And I say ex-junkie because I am. Um, to, you know, I, I do try and take my life very serious. In fact, soccer's probably the most serious thing, but the music is everything. Yeah. It's just dragged on, but I just can't wait for people to hear some of the other songs. Some, some of the songs, some people are going to go, wow, how could he sing that? But it's kind of like a story, you know, a bit like the book. Yeah. Well, Pete, thank okay. thank you so much for doing this. I'm going to tell you again from the heart: there is nobody that um, has more love for you than as a fan. I don't I don't know you that well if it's a person, but there's nobody that has more love as a fan for you than me. I'm sure we'll meet up, Michael. So don't worry about that. And I will keep, I'll stay alive for you. Please do. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna pray every day. Okay. Dad. All right, Pete. Thank and I'll you. tell you what. Yeah. It's it's my pleasure. It's lovely talking to you again. Thank, thank you so much, Pete, and have a great rest of your night. Yeah, yeah I will, Doug. Okay. I'm gonna go back to sleep because I. Okay. I, I actually did have a lay down for an hour, so because I like to uh, be fresh yeah. when I. When I talk, you know, I had a few. So, uh, I had a few beers because I was a little bit nervous talking to you. So I feel more relaxed now. Really? Yeah. Don't have to worry about that. Okay. I've I've a few beers. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Pete. No, I didn't have a few beers. I had a glass of Chardonnay. There you go. That's nice. There you That's go. Nice. All right. Thank you so much, Pete. I will talk to you soon. I hope. My pleasure. Okay. Give Bye. my best to the people of San Francisco. I, I will. You're missed out here. I can't wait to see everybody. Okay, Pete. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you Thanks. so much. Bye now. Thank you, Michael. B bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Uh, well, second half, you got more questions answered in the second half. And honestly, I was a little bit worried after the first half. I'm thinking maybe Pete's not doing so well. But now he's in the second half, he's sounding a lot better. So <sighs> thank you so much for listening, friends. I'm going to close out with... I'm going to close out with something from Amphetamine. I don't know what I'm going to... I'm not sure what I'm going to close out with, but uh, here it is, friends. Thank you so much for listening. Rockandrollgeek.com is where you can find the show. Um, Rockandrollgeek at gmail.com is how you can reach me. You can find me on the Facebook, r, &R Geek. You can find me on the Twitter, r, &R Geek. You can find me on the Instagram, Rockandrollgeek, don't ask. And I will put links to where you can find Pete Way's book, A Fast Ride Out of Here, Confessions of Rock's Most Dangerous Man. It is the best rock book that I have read. My favorites are uh, Please Kill Me, uh, Walk This Way, The Aerosmith Story, and although I'm not a Motley Crue fan, The Dirt is a really good book. This one beats them all, friends, so please uh, check it out if you're a UFO fan. You will not be disappointed. I read, I mean, I'm a slow reader. I read this damn thing in two days, and that's... That's good. For, I, it takes me forever to read a book. So if I can do it, you'll love it, friends. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you to everybody who donates to the show. Without your donations, the show would die a horrible, putrid, stench-filled death. Tight, we'll talk to you soon, friends. <laughs> Keep 
down here while I practice what I preach. But the jungle's the only thing that they believe in. Can't buy smack on food stamps. Even the Western feels so damn good. There ain't no one that's here. 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 There ain't no one
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. 